Hello, and welcome to the 10th in this series of programs about foundational concepts in economics. What we're going to look at here is an idea that is very important for contemporary economics, uh, and which is used by many economists in many different contexts to explain many different features of the world in which we live. This is the idea of transactions costs. Now, the idea was first formulated back in the 1930s by the English economist, Ronald Coase. I say English, although he actually spent most of his professional life uh, at the University of Chicago in the United States. It's a very important idea for many subsequent economists. Uh, for example, Douglas North, Nobel Prize winner like Ronald Coase, uh, had the whole idea of transactions costs at the heart of most of the work that he did. And he's only one of many examples. So this is a very important idea. Now, before Ronald Coase published his classic papers uh, as a very young economist in the period before World War II, exchanges were thought of in the neoclassical model as being costless. The idea was that if you bought or sold something, that actual act of exchange was in itself costless. It was, if you like, purely frictionless. Now, what Coase pointed out was that an exchange as an actual cost itself that is independent of the cost or value of the goods being exchanged. It's the actual action and process of making the exchange that generates these costs. And these are therefore what we call transactions costs. Now, we can think of these as the economic equivalent of friction, if you will. It's easy to understand what transactions costs are by thinking of a real world example. Suppose you are looking for somewhere to stay on a trip to a foreign country. You can do this by making a deal with somebody who will rent you a house or a villa or an apartment. But in order to do that, you have to first find out who has the villas or apartments, where they're located, what facilities they have, whether they're suitable, and how much rent the person is going to charge. This all takes time, which is obviously a cost because it's time you could have spent doing something else. Moreover, even if you then have that information, you then have to actually set up the payment, make the payment, uh, set up things with your bank, uh, and all the rest of it. You maybe have to sign uh, and draw up a contract uh, to engage in the deal to protect yourself against uh, risk. Again, this takes time, it takes effort, you maybe have to pay somebody else to do something for you, and so that is also a cost, and it's a cost that would not exist if it were not for the transaction itself, in this case, the uh, renting an apartment or uh, villa in a foreign country. So these are transactions costs. Now, they are very varied. Transactions costs do not exist according to some kind of set scale. This is one of Coase's insights. They vary depending upon all kinds of contingent circumstances, such as technology, distance, the ease of finding out information, the cost of knowledge, a whole range of things of this sort. So for example, the process that I just described uh, has become much, much cheaper recently because of the internet. Similarly, the existence of online bookstores like Amazon or Abe Books now makes the process of finding secondhand books much easier. Previously, to find a secondhand book and enter into a transaction with a bookseller, you had to spend a lot of time looking through uh, the stock of secondhand bookstores. That was a significant cost. Uh, now you can just go and spend a few minutes on Amazon or A Books or A Libris to find it. There's still a cost, there's still a transaction cost, but the level of it is much less. So transactions costs can fluctuate considerably historically uh, for contingent reasons. They can go up or they can go down depending on uh, a whole range of circumstances. We can also, in many cases, raise them or lower them deliberately or unintentionally for that matter, through things like government action. Things like taxes or government regulations of various kinds can often increase transactions costs, or alternatively, they may lower them in some ways. Uh, and this is actually often one of the things that the regulators are trying to do uh, through their actions.
Now, there are several very important conclusions that we can draw from the fact that transactions costs exist and their nature. One of the most important, which is in fact Ronald Coase's original insight, is that it answers the question of why firms exist. His original paper, which introduced the concept of transactions cost, was called the problem of the firm. Why is that a, a problem? Well, the reason why it's a problem is this. In strict neoclassical economics, general equilibrium economics, you should not have firms. Everybody should be self-employed. Why do we then find firms? Why, for example, does a firm employ somebody as a full-time uh, typist, or uh, these days, a uh, computer operator, rather than paying them only for the work that they do, specifically on a task-by-task -task basis? Why do we have large, complicated organizations which are conducted internally as a kind of planned economy rather than using market exchanges? And the answer is transactions costs. If this hypothetical company uh, were to try employing all its clerical staff on a kind of task by task basis, this would require a separate contract for each task. And this would be very, very costly in terms of the actual transactions costs. And so it is actually economically sensible to simply buy all of the time of that person through a wage contract uh, so that you can use them as and when you need them without having to bother about more than one simple transaction. And so the level of transactions costs is what produces firms. In a world with zero transactions costs, there would not be firms. What this also means, of course, is that as the level of transactions costs changes, so you may move away from full-time employment to other kinds of economic relationships. If transactions costs become less, then what you would expect to find is more subcontracting, uh, more self-employment, and less direct employment. And this, in fact, is exactly what we see in the real world. Modern communications technology has reduced transactions costs, and the result is that, therefore, firms have become much less all-embracing than they were when Ronald Coase uh, wrote his papers. Another conclusion is that one of the best ways of increasing economic welfare in many ways is to reduce transactions costs. That's because what reducing transactions costs does is to make exchanges possible, value adding exchanges, which therefore increase uh, welfare, that otherwise would not take place because the transactions costs are too high. We can see this happening, for example, in the case I gave earlier of the rental of properties. What the internet has done uh, through things like eBay and other sites is to make all kinds of value adding exchanges between property owners uh, in some countries and holiday makers from other countries possible, which were not possible before. Previously, the transactions costs were simply too high. Now they're low enough that you can do it. It makes economic sense to do it. So all kinds of exchanges are taking place, which are leaving both parties better off. The person who owns the apartment now has an income. The holiday maker now has a way of finding somewhere to stay that is cheaper and more efficient for them than relying upon, let's say, a large hotel. Uh, this is, in fact, the source of the whole of what we nowadays call the sharing economy. It's basically brought about by the massive reduction in transactions costs that has been uh, the result of modern breakthroughs in communications technology. A lot of economic institutions, when you start thinking about it this way, are best understood as ways of getting round transactions costs. Uh, firms are one example, but you can also think of many kinds of contract, particularly leases, as being ways of reducing transactions costs, or rather of getting round transactions costs to make things possible that otherwise would not be possible. Now, finally, Ronald Coase's method, which is the one that most economists follow, is to assume a world of zero transactions costs. Now, what you can then do is work out what that world would look like. Now, obviously, we do not live in a world of zero transactions costs. So what you can then do is look at the way the real world we're in 
uh, differs from this hypothetical abstract world of zero transactions costs. And what you can then do, having done this exercise, is to see how transactions costs, uh, to what extent and in what ways, explain the actual way the world is, as opposed to the way it would be if those transactions costs did not exist. And this is an extremely powerful analytical tool.